All right, hey guys, I want to show you one of the, my favorite bikes, if not my favorite bike, because this is the first Schwinn Stingray I ever motorized. Um, and it's the first bike I ever built, so it's what started me into this hobby and means a lot to me. And I'm excited to share it with you guys. I'll start with some of the custom modifications I made to the frame before I motorized it. First of which being, I drilled a hole right where the carb was going to be, ran a hollowed out dowel through it, welded it in place, and that's where I ran my throttle cable. That way I wasn't risking it being in this tight area right here where there's a possibility that it could get pinched or the throttle could get stuck open or closed, which is no fun. I've had that issue in the past and I don't care for it. And this solved that issue. So I would recommend it. Uh, it looks a little funky now that it's grown on me, but at the end of the day, it really don't bother me. Uh, I stretched the frame about six inches from here to here. Uh, also on the top and I welded in this cross member so I'd have a location for my kill switch I stopped using the kill switch because I figured out you can just put your finger in the back of the carb and it'll kill the bike pretty easy um, uh, I put new front forks on it from a Haro BMX bike because I thought the traditional stingray forks were flimsy uh, I'm pretty happy with that um, I've come to find the original flimsy forks as I like to call them are actually pretty reliable and there is no need for this modification but since I had done it, I left it. Um, this era bike um, traditionally comes with a Bendix style rear rim where you would have a coaster brake. Um, I find that those cause a lot of issues with the rear end loosening itself and becoming wobbly, which will cause your chain to go tight, loose, tight, loose, tight, loose. And I bet you can see the problem in that. It's no fun. So I put a BMX style rear rim with uh, where it clicks when you roll it backwards. Um, it's kind of annoying sometimes when you're riding, but I prefer it over a rear rim that likes to disassemble itself. Um, otherwise, big thing I did that I changed, there's no hardware in the seat post because this is actually a threaded seat post. I uh, took a tap and die set and threaded the interior of this pipe and the exterior of this pipe. Uh, and I got it to fit up pretty nice actually. In the future I'll be cutting this and lowering the seat as far as I can. But for the time being, it works. Um, for having had this engine for 12 years, uh, it's never given me an issue. Never blown a gasket. Never had nothing really go wrong with it. Biggest thing I had was the float twice now, uh, completely filled with gas and didn't do its job. So that's the only thing I'd really say long-term effects goes bad with these bikes. The more I've ridden it, the faster it seems to feel. It's almost like they bore themselves out over time or something. It's weird because... When I broke it in, it was a dog, and nowadays it's one of my fastest bikes. So I found that quite interesting. Um, I'm sure you've noticed by now that the bike used to be red when I had originally acquired it. Um, it was cherry red. The previous owner, before it was motorized, did a custom powder coat job on it. I can actually show you what it used to look like because I transferred the original tank to this bike. And that's what the original paint job on that bike looked like. It was very nice, but my dumbass had to stretch the frame and spray paint it black. But pretty happy with the way it turned out, murdered out. and I like it. It's got a little style, you know. But yeah, this is the bike that got me into the hobby. And hopefully you guys enjoyed taking a peek at it. Um, every time I see it, it puts a smile on my face, especially when I ride it. So hopefully it uh, can inspire some other people to make some fun things.